All right, guys. So this is the number one that I have on my uh, test. So go ahead and look for this question. I'm going to show you an example. So put pause until you find this question on your test. Now, once you find it, all right, I'm going to break it down for you. We have some exponents. We have some fractions. Now, you want to grab your calculator. And you're going to see how, like, this is a very similar setup. It's almost the same setup that we have here on the test. I'm just going to use some different numbers. All right, so um, still x, y, and z. Okay. So the way that we do this one is the first thing you want to do is just plug this in the calculator. What is 18 divided by 2? If you put 18 divided by 2 in the calculator, Right, I'm just talking about the regular numbers. We're not talking about exponents. This is going to be 9. And then, technically, there is a 1 on the bottom. We don't have to worry about the 1s, really. But I know that there's a 9 here. So what you're going to do on your problem, you're going to go ahead and divide your numbers. What are your regular numbers? Just put them in the calculator first. You should be able to eliminate two answers. Okay? So on my example, mine ends up being 9. In your problem, tell me which ones you can eliminate. There's two of them that you can eliminate. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is the letters. Let's look at the letters here. <clears throat> so the way I want you to think about this is how many X's are there on the top, how many X's are on the bottom. All right? Who has more? So I have 8 X's on the top. I only have two X's on the bottom. So the top part of the fraction has more. But whenever you have the same thing on the top and the bottom, they cancel out. So on the top, I have one, two, three, four, five, six left over. So the way that you write this for the answer is X to the six on the top part. On the bottom, whenever they cancel out, again, this is just a one. So one times one is one. That's why we don't worry about ones. They kind of we don't really need them. Next, we're talking about the Y's. Now, if you notice, we have these negatives here. So we don't even have to look at these uh, yet. All right, let's do the positives. I have 5Z and I have 6Z. So who has more, the top or the bottom? All right. On the top, there's five of them, and then there's six of them. That means on the bottom, I have a Z, one. Again, we don't write down... Um, let's put a little slash on the Z's because they look kind of weird. You do not have to write down the one exponent, but I'll just put it there so you can see. There's one more. So we're done with the X's. We're done with the Z's. We're done with the numbers. You're going to do the same thing on your problem. All right. In this problem, the Y's, we're not going to do them because you're, you should be able to get the answer just with the X and the Z's. Okay. Just with the X's, who has more at the top or the bottom, just with the Z's. You should be able to tell me which one of those is your answer. Okay. So let's move on. All right, so I'm going to give you all a formula for this one, right? So we have your word bank. You're going to drag these into certain spots, and you have, like, a formula. So let me give you the formula. And you're going to use this formula a lot. So hold on a second. So put pause right here. Look for this question. Put pause, and then we'll do the notes. All right, there's only one like this. All right. So the formula you need to know, it's called the interest formula. All right. So it's y equals a parentheses b parentheses with the x. Now, sometimes there's a dot for multiplication. All right, there has to be a multiplication. All right, as long as you have parentheses, parentheses also means multiplication, so don't worry about that. Now, the vocabulary words, this A number, the first number we see after the equal sign is the initial value. All right, that's my initial. Whatever's in the front, right after the equal sign is initial, also known as the y-intercept, also known as the starting point. 
right? All these words mean this number right here. This is an A, this is not a nine. I know it kind of looks like a nine. It's a little lowercase a. Now this one right here, it has a couple names. There's a ratio, it could be a constant ratio. As long as it says ratio, it belongs to this number in the parentheses that has the exponents, all right? We also call it a rate. So you see the word ratio, you see the word rate, it's talking about this number. And the one rule that you have to know is that if it's bigger than one, right, like a dollar, if this number inside the parentheses is bigger than a dollar, this is a growing formula. The formula grows. All right, if it's less than a dollar, like 50 cents or something, it's going to decay. That means it goes down. Wait, D E C A Y, decay, it goes down. And then this little exponent, this is a small x. This is not a regular x, this is an exponent. This is time. It could be months, days, years, doesn't matter. This is time right here. So, for example, your question looks something like this. All right, let me get a pencil because or a pen. It's too much. Y equals, let me do something like 300 times. And it's always multiplication. Never put an add or, or a subtraction. It's always multiplication. 4 to the T. All right, you see this? So this number is the A number. So A equals 300. And I can call it whatever I want. I can call it the initial. I can call it the winer step or the start. I'm going to say initial. Okay. And then after the multiplication symbol, this number is the B. So B equals 4. All right. And then I'm going to call it the ratio. Is different types of ratios. As long as it says ratio or rate, you'll be fine. All right. So that's what you're doing in this uh, problem. You're going to label the A and the B according to yours. So look right there. Drag down the numbers where they belong. So what is the A? What is the B? And then use the vocabulary words. All right, next problem. So here, click down here. So again, look, there's my formula. Harris buys 512 bottles to hand to the runners in a marathon. He estimates each hour that half of the remaining bottles will be used. Which function can be used to determine the number of bottles remaining? So look, how much is he starting with? All right, what's your initial value? And the thing we have to think about is use. Does use mean that it's gonna grow or is it decaying? From his bottles of water, if he's using the bottles of water, is the bottles of water growing or is it going down? All right. And then there's a specific keyword, half. All right. So half has to be in the in the uh, parentheses. That's your ratio is half. And it makes sense because if it's less than a dollar, like half, that's going to decay. So that makes sense. It needs to be less than a dollar inside the parentheses. All right, same thing here, guys, same formula. All right, so look for this question. Bridget deposits $1,000 in the savings account. It earns 1.3% compound interest, which is the function that models the amount of Bridget will make over time. So, oh, well, actually one thing, I forgot one little thing in here. All right, the B, the formula for B, and let me write it on the side, B equals one, and this is for the grow part, right? Whenever I'm supposed to grow, it's one plus a decimal, okay? So if I'm gonna grow the B number, how do I get more than a dollar? Well, it's gonna be the dollar plus some type of a decimal, okay? Now, let's say you go to the bank and you get 25%, right? So my 25%, I'm gonna have to turn that to a decimal. The way you turn a percent into a decimal is you divide it by 100. 25%, don't worry about the percent sign, just put 25 divided by 100, you're gonna have 0.25. 
So if I tell you you're going to make money, you're going to make 1 plus 2.25. 1.25 is the B number, okay? So they're going to give you some type of a percent number. You're going to have to divide it by 100, and then you're going to add 1. 1 plus whatever this is. The thing is they're trying to trick you on this question. Look at your question. They want you to think that that's the decimal because it has a decimal. It's a 1.3. No, you have to divide it first like this, 1.3 divided by 100, and then you have to add 1. And that is how you get your parentheses number. Okay, so just be careful with that. All right, see which one of these is going to be. All right, do that formula first. Get your percent, divide by 100, add 1, and get your answer. All right, next question. Again with the formula, look, here's your formula. 15 parentheses, 1.013. Oh no, we just did this one. No, wait, never mind, bad. What does the 1.103 represent? So, remember the rule. All right, this parenthesis number, if it's more than a dollar, it grows. If it's less than a dollar, then it decays. So this is probably the key stuff that you need to know for this question right here. Okay, which one of those sentences makes sense? Okay. Next question. All right. So again, you have your function, 500 parentheses 1.45, right? So they're studying the growth of a plant on a lake. Here's the function. Give the number of plants on the lake after x days. Which statement is the best interpretation of one of the values of the functions? So, all right, which one of those makes the most sense? Well, if you look at it here, remember, initial value and growth rate. If I say that it is growing at a rate of 500, does that make sense based on this right here? All right, if I say that they started, if I say, well, you start with 45, is that correct according to that equation? All right, so just tell me what you start with. Tell me how much if it's growing or if it's going down. All right, is the parenthesis number more than a dollar or is it less than a dollar? That helps you with the growth and decay. All right, so next question. Uh, for this one, all you need to do, guys, you're going to put these into your Desmos. Now, if you want to get the little dot, I'm talking about this little dot right here. I don't know if you can see it. So here, let me show you how to do that. So go to Desmos. All right, let's put my Y equals, I think it was, it was a 2. 2.3. So the way you get the dot is you hit Control, or sorry, Shift 8. Shift and the number 8. Good dot there. Parentheses three. Now to make the x an exponent, you have to hit shift and then the six where this little arrow is. So go ahead, hit shift six. Should jump up to put x. All right. Does this look like this? No. So I know that's not the answer. How do you cross it? I don't know. Is this how you cross it out? There you go. So now try the rest. Put them in decimals to see if they work. All right, next question. So for the domain, all right, right here. First thing you need to know is what is the domain and what is the range? Domain is the X. So I know domain is the X. So you should be able to get rid of two of your answers already. So what we're looking at is this number right here. This is my important line. Right. So if you have a graph, something like this. Now, it doesn't matter if it's going up or down. The graph can be going down, it could be going up. It doesn't matter because domain is talking about the left and the right. So you have to mark off the left side. So let's say, for example, this is negative 5. Okay. 
if I have a negative five here and I have an arrow, this goes forever. All right? The way that I'm gonna put my domain is that X, if it's going to the right side, does the right side mean greater than or less than? Now it could be going down or it can be going up. As long as it's going to the right side, that means it's greater than. All right? Now, I don't put a line under here because look at this, this is a circle. If I have a circle, there's no line. Okay, so circle, no line. If it's a dot, you put a line. All right, so x is greater than whatever this number is. This circle is at negative 5. And that's it. So do the same thing for your problem. All right, All right we're about halfway. What is the value of the y-intercept? All right, so this is going back to the formula. Remember, y, y intercept so look right here. On mine, I would say 300 is the y-intercept because that's the a number. What is the a number? Yes, it's the initial, but it's also the y-intercept. All right. <clears throat> so look at your problem and just type down which one is the y-intercept. All right, now for this one, guys, I'm going to just let you know the answer is going to be R or S. All right, take out Q, take out T, because it, there's like a little mistake here, but I don't know what the answer is. I don't know if it's R or S, but I know that for sure it's not Q or T, so just guess on that one. Hopefully get it right. All right. So I know this one looks complicated, all right? Let me tell you the rule. It's actually the best exponent rule. We call it the zero rule. So my zero rule says that when you have anything with a zero exponent, the answer is always going to be positive one. Now I'm talking about anything. I can have a negative five with a zero. The answer is one. I can have a positive eight. With the zero, the answer is one. I can even have like a smiley face, but if I have a zero exponent, the answer is one. So that is the zero rule. It's actually one of the best rules because anything on the inside of the parentheses with the zero or anything with the zero is going to equal one. So if you see a little zero exponent, positive one. So hopefully you can see that. All right, so now we have this question right here. All right, I know it looks confusing. It's actually really easy. So let me set it up. <clears throat> so I'm going to have x12 parentheses. Let's do x3 parentheses 5. This is a little 3 right here. All right, this takes two steps, guys. The first thing you have to do is we have double exponents right here. You see how there's an exponent and an exponent? These numbers, you're going to have to multiply. So get your calculator. What is 3 times 5? That's the first thing you have to do. 3 times 5, when you put in the calculator, you're going to get x15. Now, you still have this x12 chilling right here. All right. And the rule says that when you're multiplying the same letters and they have exponents, now you're supposed to add them. So my first step is to multiply the double exponents, and then I'm going to add my x1 is here. So my answer is 12 plus 15, which is, I think, 27. So the question is asking for the exponent. So my answer is 27. You don't have to type in the x. Just, you know, go to your little boxes. All right? Put the 2 and the 7. All right? So that's all you have to do in your problem, guys. Multiply in addition. That's how you're doing your problem here. And whenever you get the answer, guys, you can put it in the first two boxes, the last two boxes, as long as they're together. Don't put, like, I'm not going to put 2 and then 7 and be, like, 27. All right, put them right next to each other. I would just use the last two. All right, well, you. All right. So I know this looks a little bit complicated, but we have some bacteria. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, 1, 2, 3. The bacteria numbers. All right. So again, we're going back to our formula. Now, 
your y intercept. All right, you see this right here? Y intercept. This number right here, whenever the x is zero, whenever I have a zero, I know my y intercept. All right? So whenever I have a zero, I know the y intercept number. So it kind of gives you the way. 460 is the blank. So you're going to pick what is that? It's one of these two answers. It's just a vocabulary words. Is that the y intercept or the constant ratio? And then, if you notice, the bacteria, is it growing or decaying? You should be able to tell me if it's growing or decaying. And what do we call that? Remember, the growing and decaying has some different words. We have a rate, we have a ratio. Okay? So it's just vocabulary words, guys. Just a vocabulary problem. Let's go to 14. We're almost done. All right, so on this one, you're going to type this into Desmos. All right, so you're going to go to Desmos Testing. You're going to go ahead and put your little table. Now, the formula is going to be different. I know, like, we're going to do a Y squiggly formula. So the first thing, if you want to put pause, go ahead and put your numbers in the table. Okay? Hit the little plus sign, put the table, make sure it's X1, Y1. And then when you're done with that, your formula is going to be Y1 squiggly. Right, like that. And then you're going to put A parentheses, B parentheses. Now, if you want to put that little dot in the middle, you can. You don't have to. Some people are like, Mr. S, you forgot your dot. And yeah, you're right. It always It's always a multiplication. Never put a plus. Always a multiplication. And then right here, remember you had to hit shift 6. And remember the dot is shift 8 for that little dot right there. And then when you put the X, you do have to put an X1. So don't forget to put your little 1. X1. Okay. The A number is the first number. So when y'all type it in, you're going to see, like, let me put some numbers here. Put some random numbers. There you go. See? So my A number is the first one. You're going to write that down first. The B number is the one that goes inside the parentheses. That one goes here. All right. <clears throat> now, yours should be whole numbers, right? You're going to have whole numbers on yours, so don't worry about the decimal stuff. All right, here we go. Look for this question. Get another paper. All right, so this is what your problem looks like. Now, again, you always want to kind of deal with the double exponents. All right, so the first step you're going to do in your problem, again, you're going to multiply. All right, when you multiply, you have on the top part of the fraction, y, what is 6 times 24? Put that in your calculator, you're going to get 24. And then who has more? R's. The top or the bottom? The top has more, so put an R here. All right. That means that this eliminates on the bottom. We no longer really have a fraction. Because how many more do we have? You can kind of just subtract. 5, or sorry, 15 minus 10. What's 15 minus 10? That means I have 5 left over on the top. Okay, so multiplication and then subtraction for these. If everything eliminates on the bottom, guys, you don't have a fraction anymore. This is the answer, right? Everything eliminated on the bottom because they're just ones. So my answer is just this. That's the same thing on your problem. So go to your test. Do the same thing there. And for this last question here, this is another Desmos question. Go ahead and type this into Desmos, and then see which one of those matches. Be very careful, guys. Look at where it's crossing the y-intercept. Look at that y-intercept. It's one way you can look at it. All right. Put it into Desmos.